If you want to get deeper into the modified discrete cosine transform, you can take a look at another subject offered by Professor Schuller at the Humanal Universe of Technology, that's the multi-rate signal processing. We also have online materials available, which I am the instructor, and there you find more information about the MDCT, and we have um, explanations more in detail. So it was one, two, or maybe two uh, lessons just for the MDCT, and you can um, just follow the same principles. So we have Jupyter Notebooks books with uh, embedded video tutorials, and you find these materials on uh, the GitHub. It's the same as uh, audio coding. We also offer the multi-rate signal processing, and there you find more explanations about the MDCT. Now we'll move on to some Python examples, and remember that uh, if you're running these notebooks inside a remote environment, like um, using MyBinder or using a Google Colab, the real-time Python audio examples they will not work. You need a microphone and speakers connected to it. So if you're in Google Colab or Binder. So these examples will not work. You have to configure your environment locally and run the Jupyter Notebook on your machine. So the first example is uh, an example we already seen, and it's also explained in the multi-rate signal processing uh, subject. So I'll leave the video here, and we have the code here, but I will not go into detail again. You can watch this video here, but we will go into the details of um, a fast impl implementation of the MDCT feature bank and here you will see a decomposition of uh, audio signal into MDCT subbands and these subbands can be then processed um, and uh, we can see that this the result as a spectrogram waterfall diagram and we are going to use uh, inverse and synthesis MDCT for reconstruction and play uh, of the resulting sound the playback of the resulting sound. So for this fast implementation we will use most of the elements we used before for the MDCT example. Here we are using mat, uh, matplotlib pyplot for some plots. We are going to use scipy signal and numpy for some operations. We also we are using um, the SciPy FFT pack, and we are going to use the DCT uh, from this um, package. We are also using some uh, Python widgets to control our example. We are using a CV to open CV to display our results, and use some threads so we can have a separate thread for our GUI. And we have control to, um, we can control the push buttons to start and stop. Here we are initializing the memory for the number of subbands equals to n for all the matrices we are going to use. So we are going to use the delay matrix and we're going to have the inverse of the delay matrix. We have our G matrix and the inverse of the G matrix and we have our H matrix and the inverse of the H matrix. Our delay matrix is the same implementation like we used before for the other MDCT example. The same for the inverse. And here we have a different function that this is called the SIMF matrix. And this function implements the multiplication of the samples with some F coefficients. So it's the symmetric F matrix function we are calling here. And we'll do the multiplication of the samples with these coefficients. And we also need the inverse. So the inverse uses order for um, uh, the synthesis F matrix as shown in the lecture, but with coefficients in the reverse order. Since in the lecture um, we use um, H as a window and not as an impulse response. So this is also why the negative signal has to be moved from the end to the beginning. So there's just a detail that we are in the lecture we will explain using H as um, a window and not as an impulse response. And here we are going to use H as an impulse response. And this is why we have this difference. 
here we have um, a matrix G, the inverse of a matrix G. Here we have a matrix H, the inverse of the matrix H. And we see that there are impo uh, the inputs multiplied with coefficients in the upper half of the diagonal. And we have um, anti-diagonal delays, the flip delay, the um, input. And we are using then, like we've seen in the theory part, the G matrix and the H matrix. And we need to take the inverse. Again, we use our DCT um, for transform. And here we will have our complete low delay filter bank using, in this case, the MDCT. And we have here as an input, we have our samples, so n samples of the input signal and the filter bank coefficients. In the case, the filter bank coefficients will be given by, for example, our sign window, for example. So here we have the F matrix using this F coefficients, and here we are using this multiplication of the samples with the F coefficients. Here we have our delay matrix, then our DCT4, and we are returning. And we also need the inverse so for synthesis, and is more or less the same principle. So we are defining here, we are going to use 1024 number of subbands and block size. Here we are having our filter bank coefficients that they are given by the sign window. Then we are initializing the filter bank memory, like uh, I said before, using this 1024. And this is what is done at the very beginning here. And we set all the matrices, we fill them with zeros, and then we are going to calculate the coefficients using these functions here. So here we are just um, Doing an example to test our implementation, so we are going to plot this. We will get and plot the synthesis impulse response for subband zero, and this is what we are doing here. Here we are defining um, an impulse. Here we are filling the reconstruction with zeros. In this for loop, we are calculating the output of the filter bank or synthesis. So it's the reconstructed signal. And here we have the MDCT impulse response of subband zero of the synthesis filter bank and its frequency response that we calculated using the frac z from psi pi signal. So this is just uh, we're testing, checking if um, our reconstruction is working. And now we go to the real-time implementation. We have this signal processing parameters. If you are familiar with the other examples that we already did in advanced digital signal processing, multi-rate signal processing, also in the beginning here on audio coding, we use Pi Audio, and this we define some parameters like block size, the format of the stream, the number of channels, the sampling rate, also, we are using a GUI, just this start and stop button. So this is just what I'm doing here. And here, this is the function that will plot the MDCT using this fast implementation. So we get, uh, we read the, the audio input stream into the data with block length um, defined by chunk size. Then we convert from a stream of bytes to a list of shorts. So we prepare our samples in the format that we need. Also, we define our frames to plot the MDCT. Here is this the analysis MDCT of the input. So we have here our samples and we are taking the blocks from 0 to 1024. These are the filter bank coefficients that we defined earlier. And this is the analysis, so the output is the result of this function here. Then we have the color mapping for our wa um, waterfall uh, spectrogram. 
here we are doing, doing the reconstruction, so is we take the low delay filter bank inverse, and then we are writing this data to the audio card and we can listen to it. Here's just a thread that will run this function inside and we are now separate and we will pass in this toggle run that is a button so when I press stop then it will stop or we also can quit with the Q letter or we can close the um, open CV window that will come out. Here we are starting creating our audio stream and here is the display of the buttons and then we can start and stop. So now I will start and we have here our MDCT in the fast implementation and we can So observe that the MDCT does not have those two symmetric sides, it only has one side of the spectrum with the lowest frequencies on the left side and the highest frequency on the right side. If we only keep a few sub-bands, it sounds muffled or narrow-band. 